I'm going to be reading um, Windows to the Past by Peggy Smith Hake. This is a Windows to the Past by John Squire. The website was designed by Wix.com, the website builder. Build your website today. My husband printed this out on May the 8th, 2018, which is today. And it's from his family. Influence of Squire John Ferguson, History of Miller County by Gerard Schultz. Printed in 1933, Squire John Ferguson. Squire John Ferguson, Iberia's grand old man, was born on December 25th, 1838, in Dumfries, Scotland. When he was 14, the family immigrated to the United States. His father died while crossing and was buried in the Atlantic. John landed at New Orleans, Louisiana, and at once took a steamer to St. Louis. In 1853, he began to work on the Mississippi River steamer as a deck sweeper at the salary of $15 and board. At the outbreak of the war, he was night watchman on the steamer, New Falls City, which operated between St. Louis and New Orleans with Captain Henry Switzer. From New Orleans, Mr. Ferguson went to his grandfather's home in Marie's County. On June 4, 1862, he was united in marriage to Miss Dorcas C. Shelton of Miller County. He enlisted on August the 15th, 1862, in the United States Army at Rolla, Missouri, in Company M, 3rd Missouri Cavalry Volunteers. This company operated in Missouri, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. He served in this regiment until September 27, 1865. He was discharged at New Orleans. His first vote was cast for Abraham Lincoln in 1864. Mr. Ferguson has always been very active in public affairs. For many years, he was chairman of the Village Board of Trustees of Iberia, and for over 50 years, he has been Justice of the Peace. He was a charter member of the Miles Carroll Post Number 111 of the GAR, and has been commander of this post since 1885. On May 16, 1928, he was elected department commander of the GAR of the state of Missouri. He has attended all of the GAR encampments. Illness prevented. The trips to the national encampment encampments have taken him as far east as Portland, Maine, and as far west as Portland, Oregon. The article reads as follows. On the left is John Hollingsworth of Kansas City, elected commander of the Missouri GAR in its convention in Joplin. In the center is Dr. R.B. Tyler of Joplin, youngest member of the department, who is 82. He was in the Navy during the Civil War and has been a practicing physician for 56 years. On the right is John Ferguson of Iberia, Missouri, who will be 93 years old next Christmas. He claims the distinction of being the oldest Union veteran in the state. He was a member of the Missouri Calvary. Mrs. Ferguson died January 18, 1920. Fourteen children had been born to Mr. and Mrs. Ferguson. William T. Ferguson, born May 20, 1863, who died January 14, 1932. Elizabeth Ferguson, Charles Ferguson, Edmund Ferguson, Frederick Ferguson, George Ferguson, John Ferguson, Joseph Ferguson, James Ferguson, who also died in infancy and was born on December 25th, Isabella Ferguson, Laura Ferguson, Harry Ferguson, Frank Ferguson, and Martha Ferguson. Although a man of 94 years, Mr. Ferguson's gait is firm and his bearing is that of a true soldier. Squire John Ferguson, Iberia's grand old gentleman, printed in the Miller County Autogram Sentinel in the column Window to the Past, December 16, 2004. 
Squire John Ferguson was one of the most colorful figures in Iberia's past history. He lived to the advanced age of 101 years and was a noted and respected citizen of the Iberia community. John Ferguson was born on Christmas Day in 1838 in the small village of Dumfries, Scotland. As a small boy, age eight, he started working as an apprentice to the local village shoemaker. He did not enjoy this type of work at all, so he quit and became an apprentice painter. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> he worked as a painter's apprentice for the next few years until he reached 14 years of age learning this skillful trade. When he was six years old, he began his schooling. These Scottish children were taught from the Bible and hardly anything else. At that time in history, the churches and the School of Scotland were under the control of the government. When John was 14 years old, his father decided to bring his family to America. They left Dumfries in 1852, going overland to Liverpool, England, and departing Liverpool in September of 1852. William Ferguson and his wife, Isabella Hunter Ferguson, and their son, John, and daughters, Martha and Elizabeth, began their long sea journey across the Atlantic. Unfortunately, John's father did not live to see the shores of his new homeland in America. He died aboard ship and was buried with the usual his feet lowered the side of the ship and after a brief funeral service was lowered into his watery grave. Two other immigrants, two other immigrants also died on the same ocean voyage before the ship harbored in New Orleans in October of 1852. The name of the ship in which the family made their journey across the Atlantic was called the Colonel Cuts. Isabella Hunter Ferguson and her three children did not stay in New Orleans very long. They boarded the boat called the Sovereign of Pittsburgh and went up the Mississippi River, arriving in St. Louis, the latter part of October, 1852. Isabella had a sister and a brother-in-law, William Dunlap, living in St. Louis, so they went to the home of the Dunlaps and lived with them for a while. William Dunlap of Mississippi River Boatman, and then he hired John to work for him on the river. He worked there for about nine years until the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861. John Ferguson experienced some exciting times on the Mississippi and was a great storyteller. Several incidents happened in his young life that would make a great plot for an adventure story. During the war, he was a witness to the most to most of the Camp Jackson skirmish, which took place near St. Louis. He said one time in an interview that if it had not been for the loyal German regiments, I believe St. Louis would have been captured by General Jackson and his Confederate forces. John Ferguson drifted into Miller County in September 1861, but first stopped in Marie's County where he had relatives living. I believe they were some kind of his mother's hunter kinfolks. He moved westward to Miller County and began working on a farm about six miles west of Iberia. In June of 1862, John married Dorcas Canada Shelton, daughter of Thomas and Elizabeth Shelton, who had come to the Big Redwoods, Big Rich Woods, from McMinn County, Tennessee. John and Dorcas were married by Reverend Abraham Castleman, who was captain of a Confederate troop during the war. In order to get Reverend Castleman to come and marry them, John had to ride 15 or 20 miles to get him and then accompany him back because Reverend Castaman was afraid of the bushwhackers roaming the area who might be seeking him out. John's mother, Isabella Hunter Ferguson, came to Miller County to live prior to 1880. 
She was living near the Madden community in Southern Miller County during the census taken in 1860 and was listed as a seamstress. The descendant of this family believes Isabella is buried at Madden Cemetery, although no tombstone marks her grave. During the war, John joined Colonel McClug's Osage Regiment at Lynn Creek, Camden County, and later he enlisted in regular service in the Company M, 3rd Missouri Cavalry Volunteers, where he served with the Union Army until the close of the war. It is interesting to note that his wife's relatives were from the South and her uncle, William Rankin Wright, who was a lieutenant in the Confederate Army in Miller County. This was typical of many families that were torn apart during this terrible time in American history. Squire John and Dorcas Shelton Ferguson were the parents of 14 children, two of them dying in infancy. Those who survived to adulthood were William, Charles, Fred, George, Edward, Jack, Harry, Frank, Laura, Belle, Elizabeth, and Martha. After his discharge in New Orleans in 1864, Squire John and his family made Miller County their permanent home. Over the next 74 years, John was a prominent man in the Iberia area. For many years, he was post commander of the Miles Carroll Post 111 of the Grand Army of the Republic in Iberia and was instrumental in keeping the post in active service. He very seldom missed one of the encampments, both state and national. And over the years, he filled most all stations in the highly honored organization. On May 16, 1928, he was elected department commander of the GAR for the state of Missouri in the 47th annual encampment held in Springfield. John was active in the religious, political, and public affairs of Miller County and was justice of the peace at Iberia for more than 50 years. In 1839, Iberia lost one of her most memorable and unforgettable citizens, Captain John Ferguson, also called Squire, he had reached his 101st year. There are many folks today who remember him so vividly and are still reminiscent of those long ago days when he could be seen in the streets of Iberia with his snow white hair and long white beard, much like the patriarch of the old. There are many descendants of Squire John Ferguson who still live in central Missouri in the counties of Miller, Pulaski, Footnotes from Kelly. Squire John Ferguson's influence in Miller County wonderfully extended during his lifetime and recorded by many historians such as Gerard Schultz, who was an early Miller County historian, and Peggy Smith Hack. Squire John was called upon for many public events of importance to be master of ceremonies or at least to make a speech in his eloquent, enlightening way. For example, he was an instrumental key figure in the Miller County Centennial Proceedings of 1937 and was present for the dedication of the new steel bridge across the Osage River at Tuscumbria in 1933. As Gerard Schultz's biography of John Ferguson was written before the squire had passed away, Peggy Smith Hack not only had the honored privilege of extending his accomplishments, but preserving them for future reference. While these two biographies by Gerard Schultz and Peggy Smith Hake paint a colorful picture of the man known as Squire John Ferguson, his story is unique with excitement, determination, and purpose. He lived a wonderful long life and was respected by so many. I only wish I could have met and shook his hand. During the war, he was a witness to most of the Camp Jackson skirmish, which took place near St. Louis. He said one time in an interview that 
If it had not been for the loyal German regiments, I believe St. Louis would have been captured by General Jackson and his Confederate forces. John Ferguson drifted into Miller County in September 1861, but first stopped in Marie's County where he had relatives living. I believe they were some of his mother's hunter kinfolk. He moved westward to Miller County and began working on a farm about six miles west of Iberia. In June of 1862, John married Dorcas Kanzada Shelton, daughter of Thomas and Elizabeth Shelton, who had come to Big Rich Woods from McMinn County, Tennessee. John and Dorcas were married by Reverend Abraham Castleman, who was captain of a Confederate troop during the war. In order to get Reverend Castleman to come and marry them, John had to ride 15 or 20 miles to get him and then accompany him back home because Reverend Castleman was afraid of the bushwhackers roaming the area who might be seeking him out. During the war, John joined Colonel McClug's Osage Regiment at Lynn Creek, Camden County, and later he enlisted in regular service in Company M. 3rd, Missouri Cavalry Volunteers, where he served in the Union Army until the close of the war. It is interesting to note that his wife's relatives were from the South and her uncle, William Rankin Wright, who was a lieutenant in the Confederate Army in the Miller County. This was typical of the many families that were torn apart during this terrible time in American history. John and Dorcas Shelton Ferguson. Squire John and Dorcas Shelton Ferguson were parents of 14 children, two of them dying in infancy. After his discharge in New Orleans in 1864, Squire John and his family made Miller County their permanent home. Over the next 74 years, John was a per prominent man in Iberia area. For many years, he was post commander of Miles Carroll Post 111 of the Grand Army of the Republic in Iberia and was instrumental in keeping the post in active service. He very seldom missed one of the encampments, both state and national. And over the years, he filled most all stations in the highly honored organization. On May 16, 1928, he was elected department commander of the GAR for the state of Missouri at its 47th annual encampment held in Springfield. John was active in the religious, political, and public affairs of Miller County and was justice of the peace at Iberia for more than 50 years. In 1939, Iberia lost one of her most remarkable and unforgettable citizens, Captain John Ferguson, also called Squire. He had reached his 101st year. There are many folks today who remember him so vividly and are still reminiscent of those long ago days when he can be seen on the streets of Iberia with his snow white hair and long white beard, much like the patriarch of old. There are many descendants of Squire John Ferguson who still live in central Missouri in the counties of Miller, Pulaski, and Camden, as well as those who have moved all over America. Probable last soldier of Miller County. He died January the 20th, 1940. John Ferguson, Department Commander. John Ferguson's Iberia's Grand Old Gentleman. John, Squire John Ferguson was one of the most colorful figures in Iberia's past history. He lived to the advanced age of 101 years old and was a noted and respected citizen of Iberia community. John Ferguson was born on Christmas Day in 1838 in a small village of Dumfries, Scotland. As a small boy, age eight, he started working as an apprentice to the local village shoemaker. He did not enjoy this type of work at all, so he quit and became an apprentice painter. And this is the picture. And 
and these are my son's ancestors. <laughs>